Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Chopping Block Podcast. My name is Paddy Stapleton and every week I'll be sitting down with a different guest for a chat about food. Whether they make their living in the food or the drinks trade or they just love food, I'll be talking to a variety of people and exploring a little bit of their lives. Some of my guests you may have heard of before, some you definitely won't know, but what unites all these people is their love and passion for food. So sit back, put your feet up, pour yourself a good glass of whatever your favourite tipple is and enjoy this episode of The Chopping Block. My guest today is a renowned and multiple award winning goat's cheese maker. I first met him through the Boyne Valley Food Series when he was one of the chief organisers of the Mead Food Safari, more on that one later, and I've visited his farm many times since. He's a proud family man whose lovely wife and two daughters appear regularly as helpers and chief cheese tasters on his brilliant Instagram and Twitter feeds, alongside his many, many goats. I'm a huge fan of his work, so much so that a large wheel of his cheese made up the alternative cheesecake at my wedding. And if you haven't had some Boyne Valley Blue at the end of a meal with a nice glass of port, well, you don't know what you're missing. Michael Finnegan, welcome to the pod, and thanks for sitting down with me. Oh, it's great to be here. Good. So we're going to start with 20 just either or questions. These are very simple. These are just to help us learn a little bit about you. You can interpret them any way you want. You can go into detail, fly through them. It's entirely up to you, and hopefully it'll give us a little flavour of what your tastes are. All right, no problem. Okay, so let's start. Cocktail or pint? A pint. pint. Poached or scrambled? Scrambled. Strawberries or raspberries? Strawberries. Tea or coffee? Tea. Knife and fork or fingers? Knife and fork. <laughs> Red or white? Red. Breakfast or lunch? Breakfast. Wings or ribs? Ribs. Ribs. Cheese or chocolate? Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be disappointed if you didn't go for cheese. Uh, beans or no beans? Not beans. Beans. French or Italian? Ooh. Oh, French. French. Cheese and onion or salt and vinegar? Cheese and onion. Dinner with friends or dinner with family? Oh, yeah, dinner with family. Starter or dessert? Starter. Victoria Sponge or Black Forest Gallo? Oh, Victoria Sponge. My wife makes me one. Does she? Mm-hmm. Fish served with the head or fish served without the head? Without. Without. Five second rule or straight into the bin? Oh, five second rule. <laughs> Brandy or cigars? You can't have both. <laughs> Brandy. Brandy. Uh, is a Jaffa cake a biscuit or is it a cake? It's a biscuit. <laughs> biscuit. And then last question. Brown rounded crumbly blue goat's cheese or semi hard pasteurized white goat's cheese? <laughs> you, you have to answer. <laughs> uh, or semi hard pasteurized. Uh, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> blue cheese. Very good. I thought I might catch up with that one. So, Michael, we're sitting here on your farm in Mullaha here. The sun is coming in the window, the cat is licking its paw on the outside. It's very idyllic. Mm, yeah, and no, we're very lucky. Yeah, you've, and you've been here how long? Oh, we would have moved here by 2008. 2008. And yeah. did you buy here or was it? Uh, no, so this place was in, my grandfather bought this in the 30s, the early 30s. Very good. Yeah, so uh, this was an out farm. Uh, and I grew up in out on the Boyne Road just outside Navan there in Sanchez Town, um, Ard Mulkin. And uh, so when I finished college and came back to farm fully, I said, sure, I might as well move out here, get away from the parents. Yeah. You know? So I was we were obviously extremely lucky to have a second yeah. block of land, you know, so. And it's a beautiful sight. I mean, I love Colin coming over. I live about two fields away from Michael, mm. and I often look out the window and see him working hard as I'm tossing around the house. And uh, my time. wife always says to me, look at Michael working there, and what have we done today? So I kind of <laughs> love him, but resent him at the same time. So let's go back to the start, Michael. Let's talk about uh, your kind of your food history. You mentioned your family there. Do you have a big family? Uh, so I'm the oldest, uh, and I have two brothers and a sister. And how was your family food-wise at the, at the start? Uh, were, you, were you the kind of family that sat down and ate together every oh, big day? big time. Yeah, so my mum, uh, I suppose like Jenny, my wife, uh, is big, um, you know, big into cooking and a big feeder, you know, one of those. So, so uh, And my mum is also an entertainer in a big way. Uh, so she loves having parties, loves having food gatherings, basically, you know, family uh, and friends. Uh, so she really gets uh, big into having the full table setting with a glass of a glass for every different drink. So you know, a glass with your starter, a glass a different wine with your main course, and also the dessert wine. She's huge into her wines and all the different paraphernalia that goes with, goes with eating. So, so would you say she gave you your love of food? Oh, absolutely. Cause, like, we were very lucky that we ate. We always ate well. You know what I mean. And, and were you so say? 
was it a meat and two veg kind of a family? Was it more adventurous than that? Was it roast? Was well, it... actually, I, I, now, now that we look back, because Jenny, uh, my wife, cooks an awful lot of... Uh, um, she's always trying different different things. And it's only now that I realise that mum never cooked kind of X, Y and Z. So uh, um, mum, I suppose she cooked definitely meat. Yeah, a lot to do with meat. but she And a bit of pasta, but she wouldn't have done... Uh, much Asian, you know, with noodles or, or, or curries and things, whereas Jenny and my wife does, you know, an awful lot of that as well, so okay. uh, I suppose it's only when you get older you kind of think back on that. So we're roughly the same generation, so I'm 41. Yeah, 42 this 42, year. yeah, so back in those days there wouldn't have been a whole lot of Asian and... Well, that's what they are, then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, what do we know? The meats, you know, a, a lot of hams and roasts, uh, and then you know, obviously you had mince or spaghetti bolognese. I suppose that would have been exotic the back state, in the day. Yeah, you know, yeah. chili con carne was yeah. from a different country. <laughs> and were you an adventurous eater? Were you were you fussy? Uh, were you... No, I would have ne- ate nearly everything. I was never a fan of. Um, uh, well, I suppose we we'll probably go into that. Uh, the things I do, I do and don't like, but yeah. um, uh, no. I, I, the way it was in our house, if you didn't eat it, that was it. You, you went hungry. You went hungry. It's a good way of getting yeah, children to yeah. eat food. And then as you grow older, you went to boarding school. I did, yeah. What well, age was that? Uh, so when you go to first year, about 12, I think, yeah. 12. I went to school. And what was the, was the food like over there? Uh, well, it's a huge, big cafeteria, you know, so it wouldn't, wouldn't be very exciting. Big, you know, I was in what's made a big, massive pots, you yeah. know, so stews and... Uh, um, you know, yeah, you'd be, we got big eyeball knees and things like that, but it was all very bland and, and boring. But, so you look, but, but you got fed. You look forward to getting home to Mammy at the Yes, weekend. absolutely. Very good. And coming from a farming background, did you always know you'd be a farmer? Uh, do you know what I did, actually? I just, uh, I liked the, the lifestyle. Um, uh, I probably wasn't going to be good at anything else. Um, <laughs> you know, but were uh, you doing it from when you were a child? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like when, yeah, I think generally, um, if you grow up in a farm, you're, you always help from an early age you know, especially the oldest boy yes yeah. exactly so um, I suppose I went to ag college and uh, yeah I just kind of kept, kept it up and then you know, you know I, was, I was happy to do it and then you went to New Zealand for a little while is that right yeah so I went to Greenman College in, up in the north uh, to, to do my ag course and then as soon as I finished that uh, I went um uh, I signed up for like a farm relief service over New Zealand so basically for that year they placed you in all sorts of different farms for either kind of two or three uh, stints or, or a month or two uh, and it's a great way of seeing the country and seeing different farmers and did you always have the idea that you're going to be a beef farmer uh, no so we had dairy cows uh, on the home farm okay. uh, outside Navin so I was always a dairy cow man um, and so the, the plan was to work on dairy farms in New Zealand uh, and then you can learn as much as I can because New Zealand really is where you want to go to see what they're doing the grass based system uh, and then come home and, and uh, kind of do dairy in, uh, at home but I suppose I spent I ended up spending four years out there uh, and when we got back um, it kind of turned out our, our whole kind of farming our whole farm was kind of complicated because my dad was uh, in partnership with his brother and they've got another two farms over in uh, Kenstown. And so th- there was a whole big operation. But when I came back, we kind of had to you know, go our separate ways because my uncle had a son as well. So he wanted to do his thing. I wanted to do my thing. So And you probably would have killed each other in family. Uh, well, no, no not, not really. But I was into dairy and they weren't. They were into sheep and I was into sheep. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, uh, and then and so, yeah, so that was complicated split it up and then as it happened then the dairy enterprise was um, it, the equipment was very very old uh, and um, dad didn't really want to spend an awful lot of money to um, to do it up so we actually ended up shutting down the dairy uh, herd so it was okay so you were coming back with all these new ideas and the finance just wasn't there yeah yeah they weren't just there ready to to get big loans out you yeah. know and it was going like you know, hundreds of thousands to, to, to kind of uh, get it to where it should be so we just shut it down and I went and of course the boom was just started that time uh, so I, I went working on sites for a few years and said right listen sure uh, I'll get a job and and then eventually I said right we better come back to the farm full time and that's when uh, I said right we'll have to pick an enterprise to get stuck into and at the time uh, they were uh, Glen Esk were looking for goat farmers uh, had you done any goat farming in New Zealand right? I had seen experience? it I had seen a few farms over there uh, but when I thought about them we went and looked at existing goat farmers around the country and it was very similar to cows and there was no quota so you could just get your goats and get started, you know. Uh, and at the time, there was a great grant um, from the Department of Agriculture to build sheds. So there was like a 70% grant to build sheds. So it was like a no-brainer. Free money. Um, yeah, so, and as well, of course, it was just at the getting towards the height of the boom. You could get money for nothing with interest rates. You know, like yeah. I got um, my interest rate here at 1%. Okay. You know, you, you couldn't. I, I so when did you move in here? So we started building uh, at the end of 2007. 
um, uh, and then we go, yeah so we had everything set up kind of mid 2008 and like we just got a mobile home and we as I always joke we, we built a gold shed before we built a home <laughs> well, you had your priorities <laughs> straight from the yeah. future and then 2008 the shit hit the fan the world yeah. collapsed and I was so lucky I remember I remember was finalising we built everything and we were settling the kind of um, with, with the bank manager and he was uh, we were just getting the last payments for uh, the pay stuff and he was going my god he said you were so lucky to get that loan you were one of the last loans so that, just, we, that we finalised just in time yeah everything just stopped ground to a halt like it was so so lucky um, it's funny how timing works isn't, isn't it? it another it's month that you just, might not be here now oh, absolutely they didn't what happened so um, uh, so then of course we had a year or two uh, and then the recession hit then Glenisk basically what happened was we just got into goat farming we had a year of good prices and then the recession started to hit them that obviously demand in goat milk in the, in the supermarkets dropped and our milk price started to get to fluctuate and was dairy at this, going through the same fluctuations or was it a bit more secure? Uh, the, our dairy uh, no dairy in general dairy in general like, um, did you ever think jeez I should have oh stopped. yeah going into the cows yeah um, I think yeah, they had fluctuations as well it's not yeah. about it yeah so um, but there see the thing the difference between goat milk and cow milk is that goat guys are on the world market it gets, goes into powder it goes all over the world whereas my milk stays within Ireland oh, okay. uh, so it's very it's, it's, it's an Irish it's whatever happened in Ireland that affects our, our milk what does goat powder go into uh, with goat milk no the powder Oh, uh, baby. Go, really? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, all our milk goes into yogurts and, yeah, and uh, yeah, into good. cartons of milk. And, and none of our none of the goat milk in Ireland will go to powder. But in New Zealand, all the goat farmers joined together and they they started, they formed their own company and all their milk goes into um, goat, um, that nanny, it's called nanny nanny powder. Any mother will know in the supermarkets the nanny milk. Uh, it's to, it's sold worldwide. So. I didn't know that. I always yeah. just assumed all, all baby powder, baby, baby formula was, was cow. It, w- it would be, yeah, but the um, this, this goat one's very popular, yeah. And something you might move into down the line? Well, uh, the farmers, we have all discussed it at one of the meetings, but um, to build a, um, none of the current cow powder factories would take goat milk because they'd have to, clean all their systems then to, you know, to put the, and it wouldn't be worth our time. So for you're that, talking for, a big investment. Yeah, to yeah. build one is, you know, well, plenty of land. millions to, to build one. You've plenty of land there, I won't <laughs> object. Yeah, <laughs> it's not land, it's money. <laughs> so when did your cheese start getting a foothold? Yeah, so shortly after that then, when the recession really started to show that the prices were fluctuating, then we said, right, wouldn't it be great if we had, uh, you know, our own product of, of some sort to put, to divert some of the milk so we weren't depending completely on, on the co-op. Uh, and that's when we thought of maybe bottling our own milk or yogurt, uh, and then obviously cheese. So we settled on the cheese. And know. it's like Boyne Valley Blue Goat's cheese. Obviously, it's very well known now, but it's a unique cheese. Yeah, well, I suppose one thing we looked into the cheeses, uh, we saw there was a kind of bit of a gap in the market that there uh, there aren't very many. But there was no goat blues at all in Ireland, uh, and there's kind of few even on the world scene. You know, there's there's one or two made in England. You know, um, and some in France. So. It kind of that's one of the big things I suppose when you're starting a business or you know forming a m- m- going to get a new product out there if it's different and what the whole what's the US USP, USP yeah. you know that's the big thing you know so that's what so, I'm doing so there isn't a food podcast in the world the yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it's special yeah very special I have you yeah <laughs> so um yeah so that's so it made sense to go that route did you look at any others before you settled on the, on the blue uh well I suppose um yeah we did you know like I mean I do I love a gouda. Uh, and I still might, uh, still might do make a gouda because I, I, I was taught to make a gouda. We, we did make some when I was um, when we built our new premises here. Uh, we, I, I got, a, I got a grant and I got taught by one of the cheesemakers in Moor Park, and he showed me how to make a few different cheeses. Um, so and and uh, gouda is not, it's, it's, you know, it's it's similar. Um, it's not too complicated. Yeah. You know. Uh, so watch this space. Watch your space, yeah, yeah. I'm fiddling around with lots of different things at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to make a, a kind of a cheddar-y um, white cheese at the moment. It's just, it's, it's all down to cheese presses and I don't have a strong enough one yet. So It'll come. It'll come, yeah. And tell me, did you kick off then Farmer's Marcus? Was that your starting off point for the cheese? Uh, I, no, I, I, I'm actually, uh, people will know that um, I, don't, I don't do markets at all, really, because I'm, every cheese maker, every business is slightly different. I suppose some cheese makers are just that. They don't have the farm inside of it. So they have, you know, maybe time to, uh, to, to do, kind of spend hours uh, you know, on a Sunday or whatever. Uh, so because I'm milking, twice a day every day 
you know, Sunday might be the only bit of time in between meetings that I get off and say, yeah. I'm not going off to do a bloody market on, on that day. So what, would you just do the big ones like Sheridan's once yes. a year? Or? So, uh, though, yeah, you like Sheridan's is a big one. A Bloom, we would go to, uh, and then some of the kind of Boyne Valley Food Series events uh, I, I would go to. But, yeah, it's just, if, if I go to them, I have to pay someone to milk the goats and, you know, so... Um, and yeah, so it's just not generally my it's balancing my, how much the PO is yeah, worth versus the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just had decided purposely not to go down that route, you know. And yet, the first way I met you was one of those events, the the Mead Food Safari, That's the right. famous Mead Food Safari, yeah, where yeah. we so we got a bus in Slane and we visited four farms. And little did I know that I would be buying a house right in between all these four farms yeah. three or four years later. But how did that come about? Uh, well. I think when we were doing that that first year, which seems like you know a lifetime ago now, mm. um, uh, Olivia Duff, uh, obviously if we were on the phone the whole time, you know she was basically thinking of all the different ideas for events that we could drum up and, and make for this first year of the the food series, and I think she had said to me, uh, she had been on some of these similar events around the country. I think it was Waterford or one of them. She said, and they. They had done something similar, you know, a, a food safari. And I think that was even she might have got the name from. They'd call it a, a safari. And uh, she said to me, do you think we could do one up here? You know, uh, what about you, such and such and such and such. And I said, right, well, should we give it a lash? Uh, and it was brilliant. Yeah. I yeah. remember we got we were lucky. We got the, the sunniest of days. That's right. That and there's so many yeah. places within five miles of here. Yeah, yeah. And then the barbecue at the end as well. That's it. Yeah. I remember it, I didn't expect to enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did. And, and it's and so different to what it is now because we had Bernie Brooks who doing the ice cream. Yeah. And uh, the great thing about going over her direction was we had Mrs. O's. Which I have was, to say, uh, you know. <laughs> Mrs. O's, much as the farms were brilliant, <laughs> that picture I have at that point outside oh, Mrs. O's. Mrs. O's is the um, famous pub I in the Guinness. pulled it off because we don't fit in the pub now. Uh, it's uh, too popular. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it, it actually it's the time now. We spend more time now speaking to the farmers, and that, and that's but the fact that we have Mark with the cider, uh, you, you know, he, he there's, there's so much, so much, so much gorgeous cider to taste there. You need don't need a pub. So, that's Mark Jenkinson um, and Cocker Geese. That's right. Yeah, and he's only down the road there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's, it's a great trip, you know. Mm. And and he plans to do it next year. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, you know, it works. Uh, it's it's very popular. It always sells out, yeah. uh, and like e- even ourselves now that the Slane Food Safari, like the group that we all go to, you know, obviously myself and then Mark and Coggy and uh, Rock Farm Slane and uh, and Jack of Newgrange Gold, uh, like we're going to do tours, the, the similar tour of that, you know, separately, you know, each month if if it sells out, you know. And is agri tourism kind of uh, I say agri tourism like you know what I'm talking about? Basically yeah, tourism yeah, and farms. Is, is that uh, something that you're pushing? Y- yes, uh, it is. Uh, but I have to get the balance again, you know. So as I said, like the, the our little staying food circle, we have this option now that if we can fill a bus or 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 even uh, get the minimum number, that we could possibly do one every month. Uh, even if we got a few that would suit, suit us down to the ground. Uh, it's definitely a runner because like, we have the distillery down the road uh, and there's an awful lot happening in the Boyne Valley area. Uh, and I think we're getting a name for this sort of stuff. Uh, and like, and we've got some super producers. So it, it's definitely a runner. And you've teamed up with the distillery quite a few times, haven't you? Um, we have, yeah. So Gary, uh, kind of the, I suppose he's the kind of the VIP kind of tourism side of it. He would, uh, if they've got a group of guests from overseas, you know, he'll say, while you're here, would you like, you know, if you want to do a few other things, there's a cheese maker, there's a cider maker, you know, there's a few other people to see. And so very often I'll get a group of Americans down here uh, and I give them the whole tour. Yeah. And what do they, like, what's, what is, what's their reaction? Oh, you, oh my God, this yeah, is amazing, it. you know. So uh, it's, it's not very, um, they, they, they find it very quaint, of course, because uh, over there it's big ranches, you know, ranches and things. And yeah. everything's massive, so. And how far um, back does this date, this farm? Oh well, this is. I mean, I've got records at the house here. Um, you know, in 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 the big yard because obviously people can't see it through the podcast. But there's a it's a big stone yard here, very old. Well, we know that Sir Richard Teeling was here in uh, fifteen ten. Is that Richard Teeling of the Teeling whiskey? That is the they've connection to the Teeling family. Very yeah, nice. I, I had one of his relations come over from a uh, Mary Teeling from America, come track me to here because her ancestors obviously came from here. And is there a connection then because they've released a Brabazon? series of whiskies and the Brabazon restaurant is in Tankardstown I think there was a Lord Brabazon so he was the Earl of Mead the so of the Brabazon family who would be based in Kilruddery so that's a coincidence though that you've Brabazon here they've released Brabazon whiskey and this used to be their their firm uh, uh, well he owned they owned it for a while so um, 
uh, the Brabasons owned Tankers Ten House and they owned this place, uh, Brabison Morris, uh, for a while. Uh, and he's quite a, um, a character, that fella. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently, he lost his place in a, in a game of poker. Wow. Uh, he was quite a, a man for. Uh, which I mean, like they had oceans of land. They, they owned big tracts of land in Screen. Uh, obviously, they 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 had Tanker Sen in here, uh, so that's why yeah, that's why the Brabson Restaurant is called that over in Tanker Sen because yeah. it was. Well, on that, Michael, because you're my first ever guest, I brought you a little present. All oh, right. Yes. So this is a bottle of Teeling whiskey. Oh, Virginia Macros. Pot still whiskey. Oh. So from that's your, from your collection. That's from well, it's from the collection, yeah. Gee, and Max, I'm glass. very on. Gee, I'm very, very on. So oh you'd be able God. to sit back now someday. And well, we'd have to do a swap there with some cheese before you go. Well, that's I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so you'd be able to have a little drink wow. there when I'm gone. And absolutely, thank you very much. No that's, problem. Um, that is amazing. But just going back to uh, Slane, I hope Slane won't mind me now after giving you a teeling whiskey, not a Slane whiskey. You did a whiskey washed cheese with, with the Slane. I did, I did. So they came to me uh, with the idea that, uh, you know, obviously they'd seen it in, in America and, and I'd seen it online as well, that obviously, you know, Stilton really goes well with port. Uh, and I'd also seen, uh, you can wash cheeses, of course, you can wash the rind with all sorts of things, cider, beer, and also obviously... And when you say wash, does that mean just rinse it in it? Or? Yeah, yeah, so there's lots of different techniques, and I had to do a lot of looking at trial and error before I, before I got it right. So you, could, you can add it to the actual cheese when you're making it. I tried that, that, that didn't really, uh, you really couldn't get much uh, out of it after that. Um, and you could then wash it, which is basically having a little bowl of it and kind of brushing it on let's say every few days and eventually it'll soak in nearly like basting yeah yes exactly like that and eventually uh, depending on how much you put on it, it will affect the cheese taste or the other way I found which was the best which is basically I just got a, a big pot uh, and I poured uh, like an inch or two in the bottom of a whiskey and I sat the whiskey <laughs> and dumped it back <laughs> yeah and actually what, and so uh, you do it when the cheese is ready so uh, when the cheese let's say is mature uh, at the time you'd sell it uh, and what I did is I pierced it this, this is obviously the blue one not my yeah. white one I pierced it again so that so the, the, the whiskey really could get right into the cheese and that's the best way I found because it soaked evenly all through because sometimes I've done it and it only soaked in the first inch and you had this line a whiskey line on the outside and nothing on the inside whereas this way it, it went right in it was a lovely even uh, uh, flavouring the whole way through and my god it worked out better than I could have expected and how did it go down with the Slane VIPs yeah, they loved it yeah yeah I give a, I give a wheel of it to uh, whenever they want I, I'll do they, they, they send me down a bottle of whiskey uh, which is great because it doesn't take a whole bottle <laughs> sorry yeah. guys I need a few more bottles it's yeah, not sitting yeah. properly more experimentation they always go God, it's really thirsty isn't it yeah it drinks that off a lot yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> and any chances or, sorry any uh, plans to release it commercially yeah, well, I think in the distillery. Would, yeah, well, I think they they do. They have plans. Obviously, this year is everything's out the window. Yeah. What they are thinking of doing is that uh, when you go down there and let's say you go in and have a few bites to eat, uh, you could um, have this extra. Say, if you want, you can have a whiskey and this and a cheese pairing. So they will have my normal cheese and then they'll have like obviously the whiskey cheese as well. So they can pay it a bit extra and have this like kind of VIP. Excellent. You know, so they'll say to me, right, we have this group and they, they've ticked the boxes for this, have this cheese ready for this day. You know? Brilliant. That's so, a great way to get, get your name right. Oh, absolutely. To be, do I anything in conjunction with the guys down there? It makes so much sense. It's a whole synergy to it. Yeah, you know? it's it brilliant. Is. Uh, and it's great that they are keen also to be, uh, you know, including us, you know, what's going on. Yeah, I have to admit, I saw Michael putting up um, a tweet about the whiskey. Uh, cheese and being a bit of a whiskey fan myself I answered Max and, well that looks interesting <laughs> yeah, open for an is. invite and I got an invite straight down and I tried it and it was really subtle and subtle isn't a word you'd, you'd, you'd kind of normally associate with blue cheese and whiskey but the, the little hint of the whiskey notes through the cheese was absolutely fantastic yeah, so, yeah. I, I was afraid to see and I've done it before it's sometimes if you put too much whiskey in all you can taste is whiskey and not cheese and vice versa so just getting the blend where you can Enjoy the cheese, you go, yeah, and then also just get that lovely you know, whiskey taste as yeah. well along with it, you know. So oh, well, I, I'm a fan, so I can't wait till it's released commercially. Um, so, has COVID affected you much? Oh, massively, yeah. yeah. So um, right now, everything's back to the way it was, but uh, it was like a switch. I think every kind of food producer said there, you know, a certain time in March that uh, everything just, orders just stopped uh, to a halt. Even to, I suppose, if you were in a supermarket, it might be different, but to the yeah, cheese Yeah, well, shops. funny enough, actually, I do have some cheese that goes to Tesco's, uh, and that kind of kept tipping along, uh, and to a, a few different, uh, like, like the Sheridans and things, you know, the, the shops, 
you still um you still have cheese going there but i suppose over 70 percent of my cheese will go to restaurants and hotels and things like that so that's just bang stopped Gone. you know so uh, i stopped making cheese then basically i had cheese obviously in store this yeah. is the whole thing with anybody I, I suppose i was luckier than let's say the soft cheese makers like i remember it's uh uh, Siobhan over in St. Tola there, like, you know, they had all this really? soft cheese, you know, made. Uh, and, and they've also got a herd of goats over there as well. And so they had to stop making, absolutely stop making cheese because cause they had all this stuff already made. And then they had all this milk from the goats. And, the, and so they had to start making hard cheese. So um, just to use the milk, you know. And for a, and for, for the first couple of weeks, they didn't, didn't know what to do with their milk, you know. Uh, so that was, was very tough. So basically, everything stopped for a few months. And then... About three weeks ago, it was like another switch. Just, you know, uh-huh. once they gave the dates to the restaurant's opening, it was like, bang, uh, all the other stuff. I think, it was, I said to Jenny, everybody that I ever sold cheese to rang me or texted me or emailed me at the same time and said, we want cheese. And I was like, you know, damn, <laughs> I, I, I didn't have enough cheese. And tell um, me, was it, as a man who's always busy, I mean, I, we follow you on Instagram and on Twitter and it seems like you never stop. Was it refreshing to have... I know you, you didn't have time off because you still had to milk goats and you still had to look after the animals and after the farm. But was it nice to have a little bit more time? Uh, yeah, I suppose it was. Because, uh, yeah, so I stopped making cheese for, uh, I suppose, a few weeks. So it was nice, actually, to kind of forget about that for a little bit. Uh, um, it was nice to not, not to have to plan for your cheese making days, you know, uh, and, uh, and kind of put that to the side. Yeah, and obviously we had the children here. I, I mean, we're very lucky... In a farm setting, I mean, I often, you know, I feel sorry for the, the people in the towns and cities that live in apartments and yeah. things and they're stuck with children, you know, in a confined space that like we had. To, when the children do your head in and say, get out and run around outside. You I know. saw them last week running up and down the side of his bed. It was yes, so funny. Yeah, and at this stage now, they're gone feral, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> And is there any pressure from the missus and the kids to not do as much? Uh, oh, yeah, well, there is. And we got away for a couple of days there last week. We went down to Bloomfield House in... Okay. Um, I said Mullingar there and you know that was lovely you know what I mean just to to, to, to get away anywhere and any time spent away from the farm was great and say in a normal year how do you how do you manage holidays or we don't have very many so we generally get the one or one week uh, away and we, for the last five years we've gone down to Baltimore in, in West Cork and uh, we've taken the same house there we found a beautiful house just on the edge of the village of Baltimore uh, and that's our, our little dream holiday but actually funny enough this summer the first time we were going to go to South of France cancelled Cancelled. And yeah, do one of the brothers yeah. look after the farm? Yeah, so my brother uh, Patrick, my youngest brother Patrick. I know Patrick. Uh, he um, yeah, he's great. You know, he uh, yeah, he he just mans the fort here. Because, and do you return the favor? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, I uh, he gets paid. Uh, oh, okay. You know, so it's not it's not returning yeah, the yeah, favor. You know, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I suppose that, that that's my only chance really to you know to, to get away for a week anyway. You know, yeah. and then we might get a few. Like obviously, my wife is from England. And uh, we'll go to England for some long weekends and things like that, you know. So, um, and would you would you ever want to have the life of the two week summer holiday and the week at Christmas? Well, Jenny, we've often said it. God, you know, she was saying, God, you know, some people have two weeks, two weeks together. And I was going, God, wouldn't you love two weeks? You know, I said we might stretch to ten days. You know, actually, I think we were going to do ten days when we were in France this year, but yeah. anyway, that didn't happen. And we were going to go to Centre Parks, and that's out the window as well. I'd love so, um, But yeah, I don't generally get weekends off, so I milk, you know. Um, Every day, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fourteen times a. Yeah, so, it's it's know. a life that I, I don't understand. I I'd be quite lazy, and I like I like sitting on the couch for a little while. Yeah. But I mean, I, I know everybody's different, but it, it's it's interesting. Um, and tell me when you when you get out with with, with Jenny and when you when you get the kids minded, do you do you have a favorite restaurant that you might go to? Do you support local? Do you? Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. So we don't go out uh, for meals as much as we'd like, but uh, there's a few places. Um, uh, like we've been to obviously in Navan there's Zucchini's Zucchini's is great uh, yeah. and I suppose we've tried uh, most of the places in uh, in Navan at this stage uh, there's a few new ones now that we're mad to go to Tribe in Dulik and they buy my cheese actually and I've heard great reports uh, uh, from them uh, so there's a lot of places we want to go to but we never get, ne- never get around to, to going to and do you find you, you try and support the places who support you? yeah yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if, if we do get out yeah we will absolutely try to go anywhere that's that's handy I suppose you know and if you're heading out what are you ordering in the restaurant well I 
I suppose I like uh, obviously I suppose a steak. I, I do like steak, but I I, I eat uh, everything. So um, I like a good pasta. Well, I generally actually don't probably order pastas when I'm out because Jenny makes some fantastic pastas, uh, and so they never really live, live up. up to. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I suppose meaty dishes. You know, so belly pork. I I, I would often have that, mm. uh, and um, you know, a, a roast of some sort. You know, so yeah. And would Jenny cook with your goat cheese? Uh, yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah. It's, You're not fed up with it. Uh, no, no. Like uh, she wouldn't use it all the time, but uh, it's very, it's very good on pizzas. Uh, it's very good to mix into such certain pastas. Uh, I put it on my pizza with red onion marmalade. Yeah, that's a great it's combination. Delicious, but it's Spanish. Yeah, uh, but people, yeah, people say, "Oh, you, know, you must be eating cheese all the time." But actually, no, we don't. Well, I'm constantly tasting it. Yeah. Uh, different batches, but no, you wouldn't be always cooking with it, you know. Yeah. And would you have uh, like? Would you be a junk food fan? Do you ever eat bad food? No. Never. No, see, I'm not really a picker. So uh, I, I'm very much uh, my three meals. Uh, I, I've never been into. I don't eat very many sweets or or, or, or chocolates. I would have a every now and again. I, I do like a good cabbage bar, you know, as a treat, yeah. you know. Um, but and like we takeaways, like we might get one in a month, you know. Uh, you know, maybe I'll probably more likely one every couple of months, you know. It's a sign of a good chef, in you know. Yeah, well, I say we get very, 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 very well fed. You very know. good, and you've no sweet tooth. Do you have a weakness? Like, would you? Is there anything you would crave? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, I, I would be a fan of a packet of crisps. If I'm in a shop, you know, it's either a Cadbury's bar or maybe uh, a hunky dory. You know, the the you know the good old um, strong cheese and onion crisp. You know, like a uh, like a McCoy's. You yeah. know, they're the rigid really ones. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. They're the ones. They're the manly ones. crisps. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's probably what I would, I would grab if I was going to get a packet of crisps. But now you see, I had to watch my cholesterol. Um, it wasn't my cholesterol. Yeah, it was high there a few years ago, and so we made a concerted effort then to cut back. And I, you know, butter, uh, peanut butter. I used to love peanut butter, and that was James. That's out the window now. You and yeah, peanut butter is sold as a healthy. Yeah, well, yeah, well, there's different types. Of yeah. Just, yeah. So now you, ha- you can. Eat, I think the, it's the almond one. Now you have to have the one that hasn't got the bad fats in it, or whatever you know. So anyway, I had to, and so when I did all those right things, my I went I went under, and I was fine. And even as a man who's so active all the time on the farm and constantly on the go. Yeah, well, cholesterol is, it doesn't it doesn't matter how active you are, you know, and you, and you could be really really slim and, and have no fat on you, but if you eat all the wrong foods, yeah. all the real the wrong fats, um, you have a high cholesterol, you know. So that, that's it's very so deceiving, you know. So yeah. So, but I, it was very easy. It was very easy for me, like just just cutting back in the butters and the, uh, the uh, butter. and the peanut butter and that kind of stuff and the crisps. That's the wrong fats as well. Yeah, and say say Jenny takes the girls away somewhere for a night. Say you're left here on your own. No one in the house, mm. and you have to rustle up a bit of dinner for yourself. She hasn't left anything in the freezer. She hasn't <laughs> left you anything out, like a cold salad. What would you rustle up? I know when I when I talked to you first, you were very nervous about the cooking part. But yeah, yeah. But if you have to rustle up something for yeah, yourself, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I suppose I would say uh, the one for me, I, I would do a steak and chips. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I mean, I suppose it's, it might be the cliche thing that the man's always cooks the steak. But yeah. I mean, I do like. I am a meat eater, uh, and that one is relatively easy. I mean, you just get your steak, and you, as long as you don't overcook it, you know. And I would like it rare. Yeah. You know, um, I, my tastes have definitely changed from when I was younger. I never got to appreciate the rare meat. It's just, it's just so much more flavour. I, I think, my, as probably everybody, you learn about yeah. your tastes and flavours and you go, why was I getting well done steaks yeah. when I was younger? Same as. You know. Um, so, yeah, and I, I would do that with, you know, um, you know, sauteed some onions and, and, some, and some mushrooms. So you're not too bad in the kitchen. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's, that. Nobody stick them in the pan. It's not really, you know, and but not that I do it very often, but, it, you know. If uh, you have if, to, you if, I would do it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one thing COVID has taught us, always have a good steak in the fridge. Yeah. Because they last yeah. forever. And, and, and we got a meat box from our neighbour, John McDonald, down the road there. In so, Yeah, in Shalvinstown. And, like, so we have a heap of steaks in there now. Um, and, you know, they're gorgeous. You yeah. know. So you're nearly hoping the girls are away so you get more than yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and did you ever look along the lines, I mean, I read, when I was doing a bit of research for this, goat's meat is the most consumed meat in the world. Mm, I yeah. couldn't believe it when I read that. Yeah, it's just here in the West we would be, uh, obviously, if you ever see, you know, footage from the Asian, the African and Asian countries, yeah. you always see goats running around. They would be like the equivalent of us having sheep and cattle. But to, 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 to see it's the most consumed meat in the world, I couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, yeah, Did you ever get anybody approach you about selling goat's meat? Oh, yeah, yeah. And like we, um, when we, in the first couple of years, we reared a couple of the males ourselves and got them killed, uh, butchered, and, and we had we, loads of goat uh, meat in the freezer there for a few years. And it's just like lamb, you know, it's just a little bit of a stronger taste to it. It's Gorgeous. But no market. Um, so there is a, de- a developing market now uh, in our, in Ireland. There's a guy 
there's two main ones. There's a guy over in uh, in Galway, uh, Goat Meat Ireland, um, uh, and Amy and, and, and Paul Davis, and they're making a go of it. So what they'll do is, and they approach me, uh, they'll give me like a meat, the meat breed, which is the boar goat, uh, and you'll put that with, a, let's say, one of your herds, and they'll buy back all the crosses, uh, you know, all the kids which are crossed with a meat breed. To try them for flavour? Uh, well, no, well, they, they'll, they'll rear them then. Okay. You know, uh, and then they will get them butchered and they have a whole system set up where you can buy like a meat box with goat, you know, uh, you can or you can buy a carcass or you can buy a few legs. So they're, they've been doing that, for, doing that for the last few years now and it seems to be working well for them. Right. Uh, but there's a very small margin in it. Yeah. I, I haven't done it because I suppose I went into the cheese side of things and you can only do so many things. Uh, and plus, if you're going to start rearing all your males, you have to have all the shed for the males and I don't, yeah. you know. Uh, and plus, as well, there's no room for a middleman. So if you're going to do it, you have to sell it direct to the customer. And you've only so much time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just didn't go down that route, you know. Very good. And I bought, I bought a meat breed. Mind you, I did buy a meat breed male with the idea of doing a bit of it. Uh, and he was, uh, he grew and he was, he was lovely, gorgeous and he was all muscly and the whole lot. And just before we put him in with the mail, uh, with the, the herd, he died. <laughs> what happened? He just came in one morning and he, he was killed over and he looked <laughs> the perfect health. And I'm going, I was like, come on. Do you think it was the excitement of all the breeding oh, that he knew was out it was. <laughs> and I, and I, uh, it took me, I, and I spent a lot of time finding them. I went down the country to get them and everything. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh because it's a tragedy. It was so annoying. So that was the funny. end of my foray into meat. <laughs> that was a sign. <laughs> and tell me, if you wanted to, uh, if there was one ingredient or one food you couldn't live without, what would it be? And you're not allowed to say goat cheese. Uh, yeah, but, there's, but I suppose there's quite a few things. But if you had um, to pick one thing that if I was to do away with it, you, you couldn't live. Yeah, well, you can list off the things. Yeah, but it's not the ten things. Well, I suppose I, I, I thought I had, I thought I had it written down here, and I haven't got it. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, well, the beef is you know would be the thing. I mean, I love beef and all the different. It's different, you know, um, you know, meat. I mean, I don't know if you can say just meat and it's. Say it's your podcast. You, know, you can say whatever yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, you know, meat. Because I mean, I love sausages. I love rashers. You know, uh, and you know, I love a good roast. And you know, so I mean, that's. So there has to be meat in your meals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, you know, I, I do like. They don't get me wrong. Uh, Jenny makes some fantastic vegetarian dishes you know they're bursting with flavours you know I, I wouldn't always have to have meat you know I wouldn't be you know I have to have my meat but, but would you be secretly thinking there's but, something missing no but I just I, I do love meat <laughs> <laughs> and if you had to rid the world of one ingredient there's something that you hate that you want to yeah, get rid of forever well, again uh, there's not too many things but celery you know celery yeah 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 it's just that vegetable um, that uh, just the taste just doesn't do it for me now it'll be you have it in the stew and it, it's, it kind of forms a vital you know, building uh, block. Yeah, but on its own, Jesus, I just the smell of it, I, it just the taste of it, just I can't stand it. So get rid of celery. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny. I had to do a food table quiz once a few years ago, and one of the questions that I found: celery is the only uh, calorie neutral vegetable. Calorie mm-hmm. minus vegetable. It costs you more calories to eat it than you get back really? from it. So if your diet in celery is good, but you don't need to I worry see. about it. I see. That's why you see them all chewing celery. Right? <laughs> get rid of celery. All right, we move on a little bit. Uh, good chat about food. It's um. It's lovely on this farm. I'm just looking out the window again. I mean, it's such an idyllic lifestyle. Oh my God. I mean, obviously you work hard for it, but it's, it's so nice. Well, I just, I just need to win the lotto to do it up. To do it up, yeah. But yeah, then your money yeah. will be gone. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's have a little chat about, about drink. Yes. Um, so I, I know you're a drinker. Yes, yeah. Would you, do you, would you drink much? Uh, well, I suppose, again, as you get older, you get more sensible. You Absolutely. Know? And then we've got two children now, so you just can't. And you seem to get hangovers now, and we never used to get hangovers. Yep, I know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we do, we, we love a glass of red wine. Yeah. Uh, we've definitely got, in, got into gin. Um, I suppose not that we got into it, but I suppose we, um, if we were going to have a couple of drinks of an evening, because you know, we'll have a couple of gins there, you know, and, and there's so many lovely gins, you know, the, the Bertha's Revenge and obviously the Stoke down the road, yeah. uh, and it's just such a huge variety of now, you know, what's, what's the one, of the, Drum Shambo. Drum Shambo, yeah. Yeah, region. yeah. Um, so yeah, we would, we would be very fond of a gin, and they kind of slip down, you wouldn't even know you're drinking them. That's you know the problem, I mean? isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, we, we would drink wine, you know, so uh, I do love a good, um, you know, Shiraz or Cote uh, And then again, my mum was massive into wines. So she would often say, just a great deal in O'Brien's on X, Y and Z, you know, uh, like a dada, you know. Yeah, you know, the Portuguese stuff, yeah. and, and I go into, what's his name in O'Brien's and Navin? John. Uh, John. Uh, and uh, I'd say, you know, what, what's, what have you got on special at the moment? He'd say, you know, he knows what I like now. Yeah, they're say, great this in there. similar to that. And you go, oh, and you, you, know, you bring them back and you always get cracking wines. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, so we'd be fond of that. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember your first ever drink? 
Go, do I remember my first ever drink? Uh, yes, actually, do you know what I do? This is gas, actually. So my dad would be, uh, back in the day now, my dad probably drank too much. And uh, he used to bring us to, you know, he used to, because I, I was the oldest, I suppose I was always, just me and him for a, you know, a lot of the time, yeah. just in the Jeep, and we'd, we'd have, he'd go over to some people's house, and who'd, he knew we always gave him a drink. Uh, and I remember they gave me uh, beer, and I must have only been five or six. Uh, you know, and I was, I was tasting of this stuff going, Jesus, this is rotten. So I it. But I remember going, I just had alcohol, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that time, all right. <laughs> Five or six, yeah. that's crazy. And t- do you remember your first time drunk? I hope it wasn't the same day. <laughs> no, it wasn't the same day. Oh, I'm sure it was one of those teenage, you know, I, I probably sneaking uh, some vodka or something from, from, from the drinks cabinet and being violently ill afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember uh, something along those lines. And what's your relationship? I mean, were you, were you, like, were you, did you party when you were younger? Were you too busy farming? Uh, no, I mean, I, I suppose I was probably the same as any teenager. We used to go into Navan on the weekends and uh, used to go to, what, what was the, the places back then? And the Ard Boyne was the, you know, was the, the nightclub, the, the disco uh, and the beach mount. Uh, and I'd then, say, Michael, we probably bumped into each other more did, than we, we knew. Did. And, then, yeah. and then back in the day, Buck Mulligans in Mulligan's that in was body. the place. <laughs> And so you'd get the bus from Navan over there uh, for years. And Chewy Mackers, we uh, definitely, definitely met yeah, in these places yeah. unbeknownst to ourselves. So, um, and then I, I played a lot of rugby when I was younger, so you, yeah, I spent a lot of time in the rugby club. Yeah. There was a good bar day, a bit of crack there, the lads, you know. Yeah, good good crack there. And if you go into a pub, what's your order? Are you? Oh, Guinness. Pint of Guinness. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. good stout, absolutely. You know, that's why Miss, Mrs. O's, you know, you just you always get a crack and pint of Guinness. Yeah. There, you know? Would you call that your favourite pub? Uh, I suppose nostalgic wise because I did live up there for a while um, and I suppose uh, back in the day you could drive home from there we shouldn't say that yeah, we don't encourage it, funny it enough, but when I was younger I wouldn't have I wouldn't have ever gone up there uh, it would have been you know I suppose Navin would have been you know because we didn't where I was at the point no, we didn't really have a local pub you know now now beside me here now I have Gormer Lock pub which is which is definitely my my local now so but uh, I would have always if I was going for a pint you'd go into the, into the rugby club or into Navin you know what I mean and so, the other time you could get to Mrs O's yeah, I suppose I only rediscovered it when I was, um, I suppose when I came back from New Zealand and, and we had a group of then a solid friends uh, and um, they were all going up there and, you know, I suppose when I had maybe I had transport and, and you, could, you could go there for on the weekend and have a, in the summer, the height of summer, sitting outside drinking pints against out there, you couldn't, yeah. you know, you know, it's hard to beat. You know. And how do you find now, I mean, with the farm, you're up what time of the morning? So I started making at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, is it worth it going out for a few drinks then? Uh, well, actually, to be honest with you, um, uh, I'm a mor- morning person, you know. So um, I, I just I, I just automatically wake up. So if I could, you know, if I go out, uh, you know, for a few pints, I'm grand. But if you know you go to now, I suppose I can do, uh, I can I can kind of do lack of sleep, f- fine. You know what I mean? So. Everybody knows when I, the lads are all they, they go home pissed and they they just lie in. I go well. I'm milking in. I'm always in one of, it's one of those late ones. So you're going. I'm milking in five hours or four hours or three hours. Oh man, but I go to bed at all. You know? And is milking difficult if you have a bit of the jitters? Yeah, you, you just what gets me is you, you just knackered. You know, yeah. it's it's the tiredness. So you just get the milking over with and then just. Trying to have a snooze. Then, and right? chances are that's the one day the goats are all active. Or something will happen, yeah. Something yeah. will break or something like that, yeah, yeah. And do you have any hangover cures? Uh, well, I'll just take um, some, some, some Panadol uh, and sleep, you it's know, right. really, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, what happens to me generally is I don't get a ha- hangover in the morning. It kind of gets, it appears after lunch sort of thing, you know, uh, so it's a strange one. Yeah, you're getting your evening hangover when everybody else is getting Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. So we're gonna, we'll take a break there. Uh, and we'll come back into the second with part two. Welcome back to the Chopping Block podcast, where my guest is the Boyne Valley Blue farmer, Michael Finnegan. So every week I ask my guest for a recipe. It can be something they cook or something that they love having cooked for, for them. I'll then cook it and I'll share the process on my Instagram story. Now remember, I'm not a chef, I'm not a professional, so it could go completely wrong. But however it goes, you can watch along and see what happens. So Michael, what's your recipe for me? I know you were quite nervous about this because you're not a cook. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I've gone for um, your roast beef dinner. Brilliant. With Yorkshire puddings, 
uh, because obviously my wife is English and she, you know, we've got proper Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> uh, obviously the horseradish sauce. Uh, cauliflower, uh, cauliflower cheese, uh, and obviously the roast buds. You know, with a nice bit of proper gravy with it too that you make properly off the roast. Good. And what kind of beef would you go for? Uh, well, I suppose top side. Yeah, yeah. Um, From Chalvin's I presume. Yes, out of, out we of the have box. Uh, a pile of it in there. You know, so we've actually got a selection of different cuts. But yeah, you know, obviously a good roast and uh, cut. You know, so. Uh, yeah, I just that's just uh, like obviously I love lots of different types of food, and I could have said all sorts of different things that Jenny makes. You know, different pastas that we do love quite a few pasta dishes, uh, but it's hard to beat a good roast meal. You know? Absolutely, especially on a Sunday. Yeah, and how does she do the the the, the roasties? I love a good roastie. Is there anything? <laughs> Uh, I, well, I think she just um, uh, par boils them uh, and then you know gets them in there with um, obviously you drizzle over the you know all, all the kind of uh, juices from the from, from underneath the roast you know so that's the way she does. And has the butter been banished or do you allow yourself a bit of butter in there? Uh, I'll have a little bit of butter. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, well, obviously I have to be I have to be uh, prudent. You know, I can't go too mad with it. A full roast beef dinner. I'll have to go on to John from Shavastown as well and see if I can get some beef off him. Mm. Uh, okay, I look forward to it. And would would you have that much? Would you? Yeah, we would. Um, we would have it, I would say, you know, at least every month. You know what I mean? Um, and because now we have, we have a great selection of, uh, of meat to choose from. Uh, and like we had lamb. We had a roast lamb there the, just, just a weekend gone. So we would do, you know, lamb and beef, obviously, uh, and, 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 you know, and roast chicken as well. And are the kids good eaters? They are. Yeah, well, Ruth, the youngest one, would be, uh, she's very headstrong. So it's not that she, she, will, she will eat everything, but then she just... At a meal, she'd take it in her head and not eating that. And you go, but you had that last week. <laughs> oh, I'm not eating this week, you know. And so it just drives you mad. I think that's just a children thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but by and large, yeah, they do. We've kind of, uh, I think it's it's they, they do what they see, you know what I mean? If you're eating everything and you're eating uh, a wide variety of food and you just say, you know, you're always testing, just try this, you'll like it. You know, uh, Julia, the older one, she's fantastic for trying stuff because we'll go, we'll be having something completely new. And she'll go, what are you eating? And Jenny, we go, have a taste. I'm pretty sure you like this now. It is very, very tasty. And she'll have a little bit. She'll go, uh, actually, I do like that. Well, uh, so we'll go, now you eat that now. Great, another one to the list. Yeah. You know, so, is there uh, anything we won't eat? Um, well, you know, yeah, Julia doesn't like, uh, she doesn't eat beans, actually, for some strange reason. Uh, and we're like, you, you'd love them. I mean, they're just so, like, you like tomato sauce, but you don't like beans. It's, it's, you know, it's one of these random things, you know what I mean? Uh, and Ruth, yeah, there's loads of little things. We're still working out with her. It's all an adventure. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny, there was that very cute video where they were tasting your cheese and the cheese oh, shed there yeah. recently. I think it was about two weeks ago. It was brilliant. I love your Instagram and your Twitter. Uh, okay, so I look forward to cooking uh, roast top, top side of beef mm. with uh, Yorkies and proper gravy. And my, as I said, my wife would be delighted as well. Uh, so let's finish up. Uh, it's been great talking to you, but this is my favourite part of the of the of the pod. I was planning on asking you for your death row dinner, but it's a bit depressing saying death row dinner. Yeah. So especially these days when we all need a bit of happiness, I'm going to call it your perfect meal. Right. So I'm offering you three courses, drinks to match, but you can change anything you want. You can add a course. You can add pre dessert, so you can add an aperitif for digestive. It's your meal. Do what you want. You can mm-hmm. have. Your own cooking, you can have dishes from your favourite restaurant, you can have your goat's cheese, you can have your mammy's rhubarb crumble, anything you want, you can have it. So, what's on the menu? Well, there's so many things, like, again, there's so many things to choose from here. So, <laughs> if we're going for a starters, uh, I do love a, a garlic mushrooms. Lovely. So, uh, again, you know, I, I could have chosen, uh, chosen you know, salads and things, you know, with, with uh, black pudding and stuff. But this is your perfect meal. You're not worried about health. You're not worried about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and again, I suppose, because we've said earlier on, I suppose I am a meat uh, eater. So uh, since we've already mentioned the roast of um, of beef, I, I'd say uh, a roast of lamb. Roast I'd say, Hold on, yeah. we'll go back just for a second. Are you going to drink something with the, with the mushrooms? Oh, yeah. What are you going to start with? Uh, Again, I mean, what do you have with? Uh, I think you'd probably start off with a, an, an easy glass of wi- a white wine. I'd say with uh, with your starters. Um, and the mushrooms are they going to be in cream? Are they going to be breaded with the dip? Yeah, the breaded with the dip. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the way. I mean, I've had them all sorts of different ways, but um, good traditional garlic yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, you yeah, can't beat yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So and there's plenty of oil in there. You know, there. So, you know, all the bad stuff is just so good. And know? I know you said earlier on when I said knife and fork or fingers, you said knife and fork, but I'm guessing with mushrooms, you're going with your fingers. 
No. Oh, I'm like No, no, no. I'd always be a knife and fork man. Really? Yeah, never yeah. eat with your hands? I've never eaten uh, garlic mushrooms with my hands. Never dipping them in the dip? No, you use your, you dip them with, you put your fork in, you dip them with the dip. You see, your hands are filthy. And there was me thinking, me and you were going to be friends. <laughs> I love the, 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 the dip. My my wife would be giving out to me, go, what are you doing? Look at the stage yet. <laughs> Okay, fair enough when you put it like that. And a nice glass of white wine, anything particular do you like? Uh, I, I suppose a Macan Village. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's one we used to drink a lot when we were younger. But my mother loves that one, so I'm very familiar with that. So you're always buying that at Christmas for her? Yes, absolutely. Very yeah, nice. well, along with all, any other deals she says, that we're told to buy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? It's handy to know that, that they know what she it likes. You know, Brian's as well. You absolutely. can always pick what she likes. And then go on, main course, lamb. Yeah, yeah. So again, similar to the... the the roast of beef, I suppose, a good roast of lamb, you know, you know, it's just, just loads going on there. And leg or shoulder or? Yeah, leg. leg. Yeah, I think a leg of lamb. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I suppose with that, you know, uh, I like a good red, you know, um, uh, Cote de Rona, you know. Uh, nice heavy red. To yeah, to exactly. That's the word I was going to use. Okay. Nice, yeah, heavy red, you know. And when you go with the same kind of accompaniments that you yeah, went roasties, with? Yeah, roasties, you know. Roasties, Yorkies. Uh, and obviously you have to have your mint sauce, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, again, that's just I'm just actually salivating thinking about it. Yeah, you know I mean? we, we just had it there in the weekend. It was just gorgeous. You yeah. know, there's something lovely about putting a roast in the middle of the table, yeah. especially yeah. when you've got a few people with you, and just letting everybody really work away and pull and rip. Yeah. Well, sorry, I'd be pulling a rip on my hands. You'd be out <laughs> with a knife and fork. <laughs> um, and again, I, I could have done with a, you know gone with a um, like like Jenny does a lovely um, like a chicken a broccoli lasagna. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and just you know tons of flavors and things, but. Uh, I suppose you know a red meat dish, you know. Yeah, I love good lamb as well. Uh, and then dessert. Well, um, I love a few different desserts, uh, but I, I have a penchant for cheesecakes. <laughs> would you believe it? Which is mad, and I don't mean that because I'm a cheese maker, but I just love them. Uh, just the fact that they're so smooth and then the crumbly base. What flavor? Um, yeah, I uh, I think it's just like like oh, do you know what I had there recently? I don't know who oh, we had it. Mum had a kind of a gathering there recently uh, and my dad was 80 uh, and there was, there was a Bailey's cheesecake oh very traditional yeah yeah of course I forgot how nice it was That's, I was just going to say it's one of those ones where yeah. you used to see it everywhere and you don't see as much anymore when you have it if there's a good yeah. lash in the Bailey's now uh, again I do love a Victoria sponge like, yeah. I know it's a some people might say it's a boring old one but if you make it good with a nice sponge that it's not too dense nice and fluffy I mean cream and, and, and you know and the, the jam inside it's just strawberry raspberry jam Oh, raspberry. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's what Jenny makes with it. Yeah. And, um, but I do love all sorts of desserts, you know, the, a, a chocolate bernie or, or a, um, what's the little, uh, the little in the dish, you know, the, um, not the tiramisu, but the little, uh, it's, it's made in the dish and it's, it's really... Sp- Fondant? Yeah, no, no, it'll come to me, but, uh, um, uh, but yeah, a, a, a sticky talk of pudding, I, I, I love that, you know, that's gorgeous. You know, and what would you drink with your dessert? Or would you stick on the red? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it generally, you know, whatever you're on at that stage, you're, you'll, be, you know, you'll be topped up with, you know, but uh, I know my mum would have some sort of a, a dessert wine, but, uh, I, you know, I don't think anybody else normally does that anymore. You know, those things are gone. Uh, <laughs> so she'd be happy it's all for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And would you have a cheese board? Uh, yeah, I do love a cheese board if we can have it, you know, and obviously I know an awful lot of the cheesemakers uh, in the country, um, so I mean, like some of the like the best Gouda is obviously uh, Killeen uh, Goat Gouda, and um, that's just so, so gorgeous, uh, and if you're going to go for a, you know, a cheddar, you know, there's no end of gorgeous cheddars, you know, the Boru, I've got a lovely one now. Uh, so, and, so, you, so you're picking a cheese board with three cheeses and none of them are your own? Yeah, so I suppose I'd, I would always have Killeen uh, Gouda yeah. because it's just so smooth and, and silky. Uh, if you're going to go for uh, a soft, you'd have to have a soft, I suppose, cheese, then you'd you'd have a St. Tola uh, log or, or um, Galway Goat Farm have a lovely um, log there as well. And then uh, you'd want to go for, uh, um, I suppose, if you're going to go for a, a blue, you, you know, I, I suppose a, a Stilton, you know what I mean? Like Young Buck up, up in... Uh, North of Ireland there, he makes a fantastic, you know, Stilton Blue, you know, raw milk, is too, and it's, it's everybody just, it's, who's that? Um, Mike, Mike Thompson from uh, Young Buck. Uh, oh, sorry, it's, it's called Young Buck. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought Buck. you were saying a Young yeah, Buck from yeah, the North. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and he's, he's making serious ways, you know, he's making, uh, like a, it's like a Stilton type, you know, but uh, he's doing his own way up there. Would you get that in Jordan's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must try it. So, and if you're having a last drink? Um, I mean, I do. I, if I was going to have a last, a last drink at the end of this meal, is it? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I suppose you'd probably get back to the gin. I'd say then, you know. Um. You you might. I mean, I, like I do love a whiskey. Um. But I suppose 
if we're having these meals at family gatherings, you know, it'll generally. Well, my mum will get out cocktails. She has, you know, all sorts of. But I have to meet your mum. You know, I have to go over there. Things, she sounds like a head of most. Yeah, she is. She is. <laughs> and she'll start getting out all these different coloured things. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we generally, when we have an event, there's a lot of bottles of wine there to, to be drunk. So, you know, um, but yeah, no, I'll probably finish up at a nice. Gin and tonic. Nice gin tonic, yeah. And would you, like, say Christmas, do you still all go to your mum's? Yeah, well, we're all sedated now. So I suppose now that we're all starting to build houses, so uh, I was I was the first to, to build a house here. And then my my next young brother down, John, uh, he built a house uh, beside the home place. Uh, and then just in the last year, my other brother, Patrick, built a house beside him there. So there, so we had, um, so, you know, we would all kind of have, you know, either we at, we'd be at mum and dad's or then she'll come here or... The other houses, you know. We have the big traditional roast, the turkey, yeah, and the ham. Yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it's nice to give them a break because she does, you know, even though it's very hard. Does she to, want to break? Yeah, well, that's the thing, you see. You know, you kind of have to say, listen, mum, you can't be doing Christmas every year. We do not want to sit. But you know what? She she likes to be in control, you know what I mean? And she's always criticised and never to go, oh, I wouldn't have done it that way. So maybe you're better off just leaving her out. Yeah, well, this is the thing. But then you kind of go, you know, you feel guilty, you know, you, you want to cook for her, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. It's a, it's a nice complaint to have a mummy who wants to cook. Mm, it is, and, you know, she does, and she does it so well, you know. I think that's a good note to finish on, Michael. Uh, I'm a big fan of that meal. I, I'm, I'm a, while I love all kinds of foods, there's, there's something great about traditional, mm. you know, something like garlic mushrooms and a big roast lamb and then a nice dessert with some good wine on to go with it. It sounds good. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to cooking it. Hopefully I can make it look and taste as good as you make yeah, it sound. Yeah, well, I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> okay, well, that's uh, that's it for the... Chopping Block Podcast. If any of you want to keep up with Michael and enjoy a bit of the goat farmer's lifestyle, he's at Boyne Valley Blue on Twitter and he's at Boyne Valley Cheese on Instagram. Uh, watch out for his cheese in your local food emporiums. It can be found in all the Sheridan shops and independent cheese shops around the country and in all the finest restaurants. So for you, thanks for listening to the end. Uh, if you liked what you heard, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and it'd be lovely if you left a, a nice review too. We're across all the social media channels as well. Just search for the Chopping Block Podcast and you'll find us on your favourite one. Uh, don't forget as well, I'll be cooking Michael's dish. It's actually on my Instagram story now and it'll be on my Insta- Instagram highlights as well if you want to give it a try. And if you decide to cook it yourself, take a photo, share it, tag us in it and we'll show off your dishes to the world. So that's all from us. Thanks again, Michael. It's been a pleasure. It's great to be here. Thank I, you very much. No problem. Uh, farewell, everyone. Stay safe, eat well and we will chat to you next time.